All right, guys, welcome back to 10 Minute I.O., where you'll find bite sized information on all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Stephen Jong, and I'm, I'm an I.O. psychologist. Today we'll be talking about Taylor Russell tables. This will be a series, part one in a series of personnel decision topics. Let's say that your company is considering using a new screening tool, an assessment. It could be a personality assessment. It could be an intelligence test, uh, any one of those, or it could be something like a structured behavioral interview. There are many types of assessments beyond the traditional interview that you can use to improve the quality of your hiring decisions. The question here is how can you demonstrate the value or the utility of your new assessment? And that's what Taylor Russell tables will help you answer. Taylor, Taylor Russell tables is a table, a set of tables, I should say, uh, that gives the probability of you selecting the right employees or successful employees, employees who will be successful on the job when using a particular assessment tool. So keep in mind that these tables are tied to specific assessment tool. I'm going to walk you through step by step how to use this, but before we do that, we need three pieces of information. One is what's called criterion related validity coefficient. And that's simply, it sounds fancy, but it's simply just a correlation between the scores on the test and job performance. So if you can imagine you have a hundred people take the assessment and you would get a range of scores on that particular test. And let's say you hired all 100 of those people and you follow them over a six month, let's say 12 month period. And then you obtain their performance evaluation scores at the end of the 12 months. And you simply correlate the two sets of scores. And that essentially is, the, is a uh, validity coefficient. Now there's two ways to do that. What I just described is what's called a predictive validation method, meaning that you administer the test and you hire, hypothetically hire all of the people uh, and then wait a year to, for them to uh, get their performance evaluation scores and then you correlate the two scores. Another way, a more efficient way, is what's called concurrent validation method and it'll give you essentially a similar uh, information and it can be counted towards this criterion related validity coefficient and that's basically giving, taking the test and administering it to your current employees for a particular role. Let's say you have 100 software engineers in your firm and the test is designed to uh, select the best uh, coders. So in this case you administer it to administer the test to your 100 software engineers in your firm and then you correlate their scores against their most recent performance evaluation and that essentially will give you a validity coefficient. Next piece of information you need is what's called a selection ratio and this is the number of candidates hired divided by the total number of qualified applicants. So if you have 100 people uh, that apply for the software engineer position and you hire let's say 50 of those then your selection ratio would be 0.5. One thing to keep in mind is that the applicants should be qualified. So if you have 100 applicants and only 20 are qualified, you should only use the 20 in the denominator because they should be qualified applicants in order to give you a, a more accurate selection ratio. Last piece of information is what's called the performance base rate. And this is the percentage of your current employees considered to be above average performance. I say high performers here, but they should be just above average. Uh, and if you don't know that number, uh, then typically uh, it's standard practice to use 0.5. What that means is that 50% 50, 50 of your employees are above average and 50% are below average. Let's go through an example here. We have a validity coefficient of 0.3. Again, this is a correlation between the scores on the new test and job performance. Selection ratio, let's say there are 100 applicants, qualified applicants, and your company chooses 20. So we have a selection ratio of 0 
And for performance rate, base rate, let's go with 0.5. That's 50% of your current employees are above average and 50% below. So now we pull up the Taylor Russell table. And this particular table is relating to baseline performance of 0 0.50. So you have different tables for different uh, baseline performances. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. Across the top there you'll see uh, is the selection ratio. And we said ours was 0.2. So you can see that in the third column not counting the very first column where it says R. That column refers to the criterion related validity coefficient. This is the correlation between the scores on the test and performance evaluation. We said that that was going to be 0 0.30. So take a look at this. The way you use this table is you go to the selection or, or sorry, uh, the criterion related validity coefficient of 0 0.30 and you move over across to your selection ratio. And we said that ours was 0.2. And the number that intersects the two is 0.67 in this case. What that essentially means is that 60% of all new hires selected by using this new assessment can be expected to be satisfactory performance or above average. In other words, 67% true positives or good hires and 33% false positives or bad hires. Now just so that you're clear on this, let's go through another example. This is the original uh, set of original numbers that we used. But let's say we change the validity coefficient from 0 0.30 to 0 0.5. And so going from 0 0.30 to 0.5 means that there's a stronger relationship between the test scores and job performance. Essentially, this is a better assessment. Let's keep all the numbers, all the other numbers the same and take a look at the table. We go from 0.3 to 0.5. See the movement there. And now we see a number here that says 0.78. What that means is that 78% rather than 67 earlier of all new hires selected using this particular assessment or the new assessment can be expected to be above average performers. 78% true positives, 22% false positives. I hope that was helpful. Look for more videos to come your way very soon. Thank you so much for watching.